Hey, everybody out there. You're watching the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. It's 2019, but we're at Hornets Nest Park in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Jamie Thomas, helping out my buddies over at Gatekeeper Media, bring you some of this coverage. It's going to be a good card today. It's been a long time since I've seen Hornets Nest and had a really epic weekend watching some great players, including these four. Reed Frescura, Austin Hannum, Drew Gibson, and Joel Freeman, all getting a bye to the quarterfinals by nature of their Disc Golf Pro Tour points. And as you can see, everybody starts out on even footing right here. Here's some of the players that are still playing today. Philo Brathwaite has played very well out here. Michael Johansson, one of the local favorites. All kinds of names that you're going to want to know. And here's hole one. This hole sets up just to show you exactly the kind of challenge that this course is going to bring to you. I mean, 390 feet, but finding a line there requires dodging a whole lot of these trees. It's a very low percent success rate to get it all the way up all for right, a two. Everybody, welcome to our 3 p.m. tea time of the quarterfinal round of the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships. Up first, from Holland, Michigan, representing Discraft, please welcome Mr. Reed Frescura. All right. A lot of lefties coming on strong towards the end of the season here. Looks like a forehand from Reed, probably most famous for skipping it across the water on 17 at the Ledgestone. Let's see what he's got going this morning. Just trying to keep it down. Yanked it a little bit. Put your hands together for Mr. Austin Hannum. Austin Hannum. We started talking about him at, right at the beginning of the year when he nearly won the Wintertime Open. We're still talking about him now. Ooh. Two out of the four not Next making that initial gap. All the way from Fair Oaks, California, representing Innova Champion Discs, Mr. Drew Gibson. Go, Drew. Admittedly, I do know Drew Gibson a little better than the other players on this card, having been in his region, seen him play a bunch of tournaments. Guy's got a lot of power. Rounding out our card. It's probably a fortunate Colorado, kick. Representing end of a champion discs. Put your hands together for Mr. Joel Freeman. Joel Freeman, he can shape some lines now. He's someone to watch out for if he can get going. Needs to hang on a little bit more. Oh, well executed. That's a great shot there from Joel, making a very tough tee shot look pretty routine with that hyzer flip. Reed having to go backhand, sneaking that left side of the green. Finds it. That's going to give him a putt. Austin having to string this hyzer. That's about all he had from that angle. Really tough to stay on the right side of the green. Kind of just kind of hook in the hyzer. Let it work. Drew is looking to just kind of stab it through that gap. And this is what he's left with for par all of a sudden. It's a pretty good bid. Of course, you really want to get started well on. You need to get quite a few under par pretty quickly. Joel Freeman's going to get one stroke under with great capitalizing putt on that drive. It's got to feel really nice when you see all three of your card mates struggle off the tee and you just go lace one. Though he did still have to do some work to get that birdie. Yeah. 
Drew's putting has changed so much over the years. He's been working to put less body into it. Ooh. Hannah also. Not a whole lot of body into that putt. Just a little arm. In another life, he was a pitcher. High level. High level baseball player, so. Plenty of wrist ability. Reed. The boring par. You gotta love it. Wow. Hannah Gibson. Over par after one. And you don't want to have that going into this hole. Island hole for the second one out here at the Hornet's Nest Gold layout. 330 feet sure looks a lot further when you're standing back there on the tee. You have to have 330 feet, and it's not landing at the level of that water. It's landing up on this hill, so probably plays even a little bit more. I think for a lot of these players, it's going to be right between that fairway driver and mid-range, kind of depending on their comfort level. Maybe a putter for the really confident putter throwers. It's going to be drop zone for Joel Freeman. Common mistake I've seen not getting that hyzer to really flip up, being just a little bit afraid to commit fully. Reed does this very nicely right here. A couple trees to navigate. I'm gonna try to find the island as well here. Oh, that's tracking. Great shot. Again, see from that front, that uh, throw cam certainly looked like it could hunt some chains. Just a little further than it than you think. Drew, old school, high hyzer flip, floats down. Here's Joel throwing from, this is the tee that the FBO division is using, and it's the first drop zone for the men. Ooh, and that's not going the right way. Joel waves goodbye to that one. Never had a chance. He's going to go to the second drop zone here. This is for five. Well, it was his best throw of the hole. All things considered, not a terrible run, but still a little work left to do to get a six. All of a sudden, that birdie is going to give that stroke back and more. Drew for two. Oh, sticks it just outside the circle. Hannum just weak side doesn't quite get enough chain to stay in. It was speedy, but admit that one might should have stuck. Good putt there by Reed. Two putts through two holes. That's a great way to start. You know you can just dial in your throws after that, and that will be a six. For Joel Freeman. Wow, moving from front of the box to the back. One down, Reed Frescura as your leader. Remember, top eight scores advance. So, it's not just what your card mates are doing. There's three other cards you gotta worry about. Going to the first par four. I'm gonna round this curve right here. 609 total feet. It just kinda continues to curve. Players will not really be able to bite off too much. I mean, maybe with a power lefty throw, but I think the bigger point here is just get straight down the fairway as far as you can. Try to stay in the middle. Wow. 
That's pretty good. You can see getting to the mouth of the curve. Drew looking for this to late turn. He's done that perfectly. I mean, look, he is... You can see the bridge and the little creek right in front of him. That's another relatively simple turnover up to the green if you can throw where Drew did. Good on you. And I'm just a little extra oomph in that wrist on the last putt and on this drive. Just misses the left side. Uh, Freeman liked the line until it interacted with the course, but all things considered, that's not going to be the worst play. It's probably a better backhand than forehand from where he is. Austin just trying to manufacture something. Why not? If you have big power, I don't hate him taking that risk there. Just try to get aggressive, see what happens. You can still get up and down for par. Especially if you lace one like that. Two aggressive forehands. Hannah may still be getting a par out of this. Reads, yeah, that's the tough, tough lefty line. I know the lefty backhand goes towards the right as it fades, but tucked that far, it, it's actually an easier ante to try to ante it around the corner. But Joel doesn't want any part of it. He lays the forehand up. Looks like Drew is going to go high ante here. This is the shot I'm talking about. He can, yes. Just missing the tree. Perfect slide. Drew, he's very, very good at that shot. That is one of the staples of his game. Reed, a nice little touch shot himself. About nothing you can do to keep it from sliding past. You got to throw it fast enough to get the corner. It's a fast green. But he's two for two on putting so far. Freeman going to find himself in a similar lie. Similar situation. Looking for that par. Here's Hannum for his par as well. Good change up ball there. Reed's feeling it with the putter so far. Three holes, three putts. Good stick by Joel. A little speedy into that middle pole. Bounced back a little bit. Didn't argue too much. Ended up staying in the cage. Drew, after that bogey start. Back-to-back -back birdies. He's under par. Hole four. Throw from the little hamlet out between the trees. Missed that baseball field to the left. Over that is OB. Up against it. Stymies your footing. And then this basket. Elevated. Far right. There's an OB line running down the right side outside of those trees that you can see. As well. So throw straight. Fish hook to the right. Drew's got to move on this one. And that's huge. I mean, that's all of... That's all of 420 uphill through a gap. Easily 500 plus of power with accuracy. You love to see the overstable disc kick over like that. You know it's just going to ride. Reed trying to get his to pop up. Good thing he hit that fence high, backs him off a little bit, gives him 
a little more room to operate as a lefty. That's going to be a tough stance. Austin. That's a great rollback. He's going to be totally clear of the fence. Joel Freeman. Ah. Uh, something slightly more understable than what Drew threw. Flipped up a little bit quicker. Reed's tall and kind of long-armed. He may just go over. Can he get there with this? My goodness. Yes, he can. You can see him back there. If you saw the left side of that frame in the yellow, that is a big shot on that nose-up hyzer. That's plenty of power. Hanum here also going nose-up stall. Too much, and he found out of bounds. Just kind of hopped over that line there. Joel. Also going higher. That one's got to sit. He's got the green flag, but every second that that <laughs> disc was still rolling down that hill, the putt got exponentially harder. Here's Drew. He can actually go backhand over the OB, just drop the hyzer right on the pin. It's about as easy as I've ever seen this whole look. Here's Hanum to save par. Wow. His putt is all wrist. He he just kind of flips it towards the towards the basket. I don't, flips it's not the right word. I don't know how to describe it. It's it's pretty unique. He's got great control. Oh, that's a good bid. S hit the ring with a little bit of energy. Joel, pretty fortunate here that this stopped. Good capitalize there. This patient game plan, taking the par on that last hole, paid off. tough to come back from a six like Joel got on the on the island hole but all of a sudden he's he's tied with Austin <laughs> got there very different way Drew Gibson still refuses to par brand new first run millennium plastic scorpions Let's see if I can get it up the wind's kind of coming right to left just a touch might fall down Nose up on. Right. This one I'm going to try to see her a little lower to the ground. See if I can get it to pop up and fly real straight. Just a little bit of turn. Yeah, baby. Huh. Woo! Boy, that thing gets it, doesn't it? Woo hoo! Gotta love Greg Barsby. Just gotta sear it on that line. That's what I was trying to talk about what Drew was doing on the previous hole. That's a sear. Must be a NorCal thing. Hole five. This par four. Keep it in bounds. Dodge that big Mando tree like we saw. The OB comes in and then widens back out a little bit. A lot of casual obstacles here. All the rocks on this hole. No penalty. Drew, searing it again. That double sear. Ooh, that's gonna be close, girl. Oh. 
O B. Seared it too hard. Turn it into roadkill. That's what you don't want to do. Hey, just Joel. Quality, quality spot there. Most players kind of prefer that sunny side from that camera angle. Even the righties, I feel like. Not too many of them try to stay on the shady side of this fairway. You want to get over to that right side. Especially if you're a lefty. This becomes a much tougher lefty shot. If you're where Reed is. Austin slinging forehands again. Needs to stop. Get back in. Oh. Not a happy moment there. Maybe just a little amped. He's, he's just a little over juicing his line a little bit. And again, like I said tough lefty spot he was going you have to pick some kind of turnover I, and I wasn't sure if he was going wide turnover or inside but either way it's so touchy as you can see those trees they go away yep. so the nice thing about you can't, you can't overcook it too much Joel Freeman does a great job navigating there Lefty Heiser scoots up the hill. It's quality. Easy par for Hannum. Throw three times, get a par on a par four. Feels bad. Drew's looking to repeat that same thing. Gonna have to earn it. Yeah. Quality putt right there. Joel, a little more level with the basket. Just like on the practice screen. A little scarier than the practice screen. Still got that 20-footer to go. And let's see. Frescura and Hantum here. No shenanigans. Let's just see some nice, easy short putts here. There's one. And there's two. Hantum, suddenly, the lone player on the card over par. Drew Gibson stays at two under, taking his first par of the day. Hole six. This is so attackable. Four and a half on the distance. You can see the ladies pinned to the left there. They get the elevated. The men play the distance. Righties. Power. Heiser flip. Don't overpower it and find the road right out of bounds. Joel throws it towards the out-of-bounds. It's probably going to be Heiser, but Tree made sure it stayed in bounds. So he gets a good miss from his card mate. There's a light sear. A little thin cut of meat for that light sear, though. A little thicker piece if you want to be putting inside the circle. Here's the finesse line from Reed. Finessed a little too much. And Austin driving it low. Going to stay safe. But this feels, it feels bad to be that distance away from the hole. If you're any of these four players, all of these guys have the ability to birdie this hole. 
more often than not. Hoo-hoo. Uh, Reed's putter trying to warm up from long range. <laughs> Joel not pleased with himself so far today. Money on the line. Trying to win that bonus money. Oh, my goodness. Drew Gibson wants it right now. Man's on a mission. Got Adam Hammes on the bag. Feeling confident. Let's roll this thing back. He knew he knew he threw the right line. What he didn't know was, was it going to cut just in front of the chains or was it going to be deep enough to stick? That one's good. Drew Gibson setting the pace for this card right now. Reed making his putts. Just not, not throwing few enough shots before he putts. It's really his only problem so far. Joel and Austin still trying to find their game a little bit. They've thrown some good shots, and they've thrown some shots that they wish they could have back. Here's an opportunity to show off for the crowd here. Hole seven. This par four is just about 200 feet longer than the one we just played. Similar kind of fairway shape, moving a little bit to the right. This is the basket we're playing to just to make it extra challenging those last 60 feet to have a bunch of trees in them if you're gonna try to putt from circle two you're probably going to a straddle and this late flip line drive stuff that drew gibson has got going this morning he's got his stuff Here's the aggressive forehand line. You kind of let it swing left. And trust that that thing is going to fight back in. Flirts with the road, but he's going to be okay. And there's Austin. Just getting inside that gap. Look, that is jail on that corner, as you can see. But if you get past that, I mean, you really have to get past it clean. It doesn't like to fight through very well. But if you get past it, you're talking about a birdie look. And here is an aggressive lefty play. I guess I should say an aggressive layup. Because it's the layup spot that he's going for. But it's a highly dangerous route to get there. Good little bit of tree there. Saves a tough lie from penalizing Reed too much. And another hand and forehand. Look at this. Great forehand. Better dodge. Wow. Joel making quick work of this. Great job. Drew as well. Not, not too much to say about these shots. I mean, he's, they're playing it to the right spot. Reed's just a little short on both of his from the perfect zones. But he gets a floater. Gives it a good run. I mean, the shot where he's stymied against the tree, that's a great shot if you're 10 feet right, and he's probably putting, and that's the difference. And I'm trying to make it count. Joel makes good on his birdie. Getting going in the right direction. I really like this hole. This is just 
controlled aggression. It allows you to be aggressive, as aggressive as you want to, but at every percent more aggressive you want to play, you still have to play the exact same finesse. The fairway doesn't really widen or narrow at too many different points. Great hole. Really like seven. How about eight? Shorter. Under 300 feet here. Elevated pin to the right. But actually look and see how elevated this is. On that hillside, that outcropping of rock, it's tough to make it climb the hill. This is a pretty good look from Drew. But again, any action is going to filter back down the hill, making it more elevated of a putt. And you can see if, if you want to throw high to try to get it up to basket height, look how narrow the window is up there. Yeah, every little bit of nose up you try to give it just makes those magnetic trees pull that disc right to it. A lot of these guys like to power the line here. Hannum needs to stay clean. Good look. Oh, hey. Recognize that guy in the back right corner. Reed. It's one of those holes where everybody will come to you and go, Oh, it's a lefty hole. I feel your pain, Reed. Good little floater up to the shelf. For Freeman. Frescura with a long run. Floaty. Fortunate redirect. Hit the proper side of that tree or that could have been disastrous. Yeah. Wow. So... I mean, you just saw me standing on this hole, and I don't remember that happening. So, if you're wondering whether I'm remembering, oh, Drew does this here. Austin does that there. I do not. And that's a good putt on that elevated basket for Drew. Joel Freeman must have kicked something or hit a roll. I don't know how he was back there. Good putt there by Austin. Yeah, still not sure about that one. Looked at U-Disc. Must have just taken a redirect. Gibson, Hannum, getting the birdies. All of a sudden, Drew Gibson's five down through eight holes. That's a good pace. One more hole in the front nine here. This is one you're going to like as well. First kind of dog leg. Dog leg with a Charlotte gap, I want to say. Then straight back navigate some skinny trees and find the basket tucked between another pair of them can we call it a dog a dogwood hole a dogwood left or is that specifically raleigh that gets to claim the dogwood title yeah, locals let me know drew going low and slow laying up right to the gap Forehand roller for Austin. It's such an aggressive play. Especially a lefty forehand roller. Did we just see that right? And that's fine. No problem to be out to the right side of that. Just a little longer of an upshot. You can still get good angles. Reed just trying to give himself the proper angle through the window. Looks 
looks like he's gonna be throwing another turnover. This is gonna have to be a somewhat overstable disc to come back at the end. Unless he goes for the late flip. Looks like he was going for the late flip to try to address the right side guardians, but they caught him up a little. Drew, more or less straight shot. Little drift doesn't hurt. Backside of the green, well done. Here's Joel, a little deep. I correct my previous statement. Unless you're trying that knife hyzer. It's, re it's really good. Hard to get that distance. And just a little bit of a misfire there. Austin is trying to get this forehand working. It's, it's kind of let him down in some crucial spots, but he's also thrown some quality shots just like that. Finding the rim there. He'll settle for a four. Birdie look for Frescura. Just soft enough. Great weight on that putt. Tried to come out the left side, but flattened against that wall of chains. Fell down. This would be a good opportunity here for Joel as well. Oh. He was just a little too far outside to get that same love that Reed got. Gibson for four in a row. Yeah, Drew. Keep it going, dude. Couldn't have said it better myself. He's seven down in his last eight after starting with a bogey. Hannum cleans up his par. Joel will do the same. Once again, Drew Gibson is the man to beat right now. As we can see, everybody's gotten a blemish somewhere along the way. But the person who has just picked up and kept going, 1019 rated, Drew Gibson. All right. Nine more holes. Coming back with you momentarily. Stick around. Gatekeeper Media bringing you the 2019 Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. MPO quarterfinals. Back nine. Stay tuned.